वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम अनीता फ्रॉम द स्कूल ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हैदराबाद डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन टूडेज मॉड्यूल वी विल लुक एट डेविस एंड ब्लेक इंटरमीडिएट डिटर्मिनेंस ऑफ फर्टिलिटी इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डेविस एंड ब्लेक इंटरमीडिएट डिटर्मिनेंस ऑफ फर्टिलिटी इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ चाइल्ड बेरिंग three stages may be easily identified these are intercourse conception and gestation and parturition the complex process of child bearing involves a series of physiological events starting with the union of the ovum and the sperm at the time of heterosexual intercourse resulting in conception and terminating with the successful gestation of the fetus and finally childbirth though each of these processes is biological in nature it is affected by social cultural and economic factors the way in which the non physiological factors affect fertility in any society may be explained on the basis of the widely acclaimed model devised by Kinsley Davis and Judith Blake Various studies on fertility levels and trends in different population groups revealed that there were substantial differences in fertility levels among various socio-economic groups Analyzing such differentials and trying to find out the reasons Kinsley Davis and Judith Blake popularly referred to as Davis and Blake 1956 described the concept of intermediate variables intermediate variables are a set of factors through which and only through which social economic and cultural conditions can affect fertility the model that Davis and Blake developed was as follows there are indirect determinants such as socio economic cultural and environmental variables there are direct determinants intermediate variables which affect fertility this model classifies the intermediate variables through which social factors affect all the stages of child bearing Let us consider the eleven points by David and Blake. Age of entry into sexual union, permanent celibacy, that's the proportion of women who never had sexual union, amount of reproductive period spent after or between unions, when unions are broken by divorce or separation. when unions are broken by death of husband those governing the exposure to intercourse within union voluntary abstinence involuntary abstinence from impotency major illness or unavoidable but temporary separation coital frequency excluding period of abstinence factors affecting exposure to conception these are called conception variables fecundity or infecundity as affected by involuntary causes use or non use of contraception fecundity or infecundity as affected by voluntary causes sterilization or medical treatment etc factors affecting gestation and successful parturition this is called gestational variable fetal mortality from involuntary cases fetal mortality from voluntary causes the above listed 11 intermediate variables can have either a positive or a negative effect on fertility for instance if in a society a significant proportion of couples successfully practice contraception it has a minus value 
with respect to the variable and if the practice of contraception is absent in a society, this variable has a plus value. The fertility level in any society is determined by the combined effect of all these 11 variables. All of these variables are present in every society. Each one can operate to reduce or to enhance fertility. Intercourse variables. The variables mainly included those which are related to the formation and dissolution of families through marriage, through premarital sexual practices may also be included in this group. In most societies, sexual intercourse and childbearing are permitted only to married couples. The variables which determine the formation and dissolution of marital unions are age at marriage, proportion of women who are married, proportion of widows and the extent of widow remarriages, divorces and remarriages of the divorced. There are variables which affect the first stage of the process of childbearing that is sexual intercourse. Among the various variables determining the formation and dissolution of marital union, the female age at marriage and the proportion of those who never married in the reproductive age group are important, in the sense that they have a major share in determining fertility levels and differentials. The duration of the period spent in the reproductive age acquires importance in its effect on fertility. In India, several studies have been conducted to estimate the effects of the higher female age at marriage on fertility. Agarwala has pointed out that if all Indian women get married after the age of 19, there would be a 30% reduction in the birth rate by 1991-92. It was in the year 1966, a survey of fertility and family planning in Greater Mumbai, which found that those women who married before the age of 19 had on an average one child more than those who married after the age of 19. Voluntary Abstinence One cultural factor responsible for keeping the level of Indian fertility low covers the traditional practices which are followed for governing the sex life of married couples. They include the separation of women after childbirth, the custom of sending the woman to her parents' home for the first delivery, taboos in sex relations when the child is young and certain religious days. Of particular interest is the fact that the number of days on which sexual intercourse is prohibited varies from about 80 days to 100 in a year for the Hindus. Fetal mortality from voluntary causes Although women have resort, restored to the practice of induced abortion to get rid of unwanted practices, say for example in Japan, the eugenic protection law of 1948 permitted induced abortion under certain conditions when Japanese women restarted to induced abortion on a very large scale. As a result, the birth rate in Japan declined rapidly. In India, Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act MTP, was passed in 1972. Use of contraception including sterilization. The use of birth control methods has been the most important intermediate variable responsible for the decline in fertility in various western countries in the later part of 19th century and also early part of 20th century. From the experiences of various countries, it is apparent that the effective use of contraceptives is the most important variable affecting the fertility of any society. In 
India launched the National Family Planning Program in the year 1951. Later, it was renamed as National Family Welfare Program with the objective of reducing the birth rate to the extent necessary to stabilize the population consistent with the requirements of the national economy. Since its inception, the program has experienced the range of contraceptive methods offered. Since October 1997, services and interventions under the Family Welfare Program and the Child Survival and Safe Motherhood Program have been integrated with the Reproductive and Child Health Program. The provision of contraceptive information is fundamental to the ability of women and men to make informed choices about reproductive health decisions. But still, in India, the contraceptive use rate is only 48.5%. Norms about intermediate variables and family size In every society, there are some norms and customs relating to the intermediate variable as well as family size. Several sexual practices and marriage customs in India may be cited as examples in this connection. Many of these practices and customs are so thoroughly rooted in social values and norms that they are generally not even perceived rational but are followed blindly. In earlier days, the custom in India was that the Hindu girl should be married off before she entered her puberty. In order to ensure a strict observance of this custom, it was invested with a religious sanction. Similar marriage had, similarly, marriage had to be universal for Hindu women because though men went through several sacraments, Throughout their lives, marriage was the only sacrament which women were allowed. Again, because Hindu marriage was considered to be a religious sacrament, the bond was looked upon as an unbreakable one for women, so much so that even widows were expected to be faithful to their dead husbands. Widow remarriage were therefore not favoured and divorces were unheard of. It is interesting to note that all the religions of the world except Buddhism contains their followers to breed and multiply. It is therefore not surprising that belief in and attitude towards high fertility have been strongly supported by religions and social institutions leading to appropriate norms about family size. These norms about intermediate variables are determined by social and economic conditions. For example, in a particular society, if there is widespread literacy among women and their educational attainment is also very high, the norms about these intermediate variables are quite different from those which obtain when a high proportion of the women are illiterate. Early marriages were common and women had no other role to play than those of wives and mothers. Only these two biological functions were open to them as avenue of self-expression and self-development. No wonder that in such a society, the intermediate variables were favorable to high fertility. At this juncture, it may be pointed out that even in societies which generally favor high fertility, social norms, customs and practices do not necessarily or always support high fertility. In developed countries, a widespread acceptance of birth control methods as a means of achieving small families on a personal and familiar level were followed in the wake of economic and social forces. This generated high aspirations and expectations. On the other hand, in developing countries, family planning programs are being launched by the state with the pure demographic objective 
of achieving socio-economic development. But still, a good proportion of women in the developing and underdeveloping countries have no access to birth control methods. This is one of the important factor which block the empowerment of women. Let us now summarize some of the key points. In the process of child pairing, three stages may be identified. These are intercourse, conception and gestation and parturition. The complex process of childbearing involves a series of physiological events starting with the union of ovum and the sperm at the time of heterosexual intercourse resulting in conception and terminating with the successful gestation of the fetus and finally childbirth. Various studies on fertility levels and trends in different population groups revealed that there are substantial differences in fertility levels among various socio-economic groups. Analyzing such differentials and trying to find out the reasons, Kinsley Davis and Judith Blake described the concept of intermediate variables. These intermediate variables are a set of factors through which and only through which social, economic and cultural conditions can affect fertility. The model that Davis and Blake developed was as follows. The indirect determinants, namely socio-economic, cultural and environmental variables have a direct effect on certain other intermediate variables which in turn have an effect on fertility. This model classifies the intermediate variables through which social factors affect all the stages of childbearing. Davis and Blake identified 11 intermediate variables as follows. 1. Factors affecting exposure to intercourse may also called as intercourse variables. Those governing the formation and dissolution of sexual union in the reproductive period. And these 11 factors are age of entry into sexual union, permanent celibacy, proportion of women who never had sexual union, amount of reproductive period spent after or between unions. When unions are broken by divorce or separation, when unions are broken by death of husband, those governing the exposure to intercourse within union, voluntary abstinence, involuntary abstinence such as during impotency, major illness or unavoidable but temporary separation, coital frequency, excluding period of abstinence, factors affecting exposure to conception, also called conception variables, fecundity or infecundity as affected by involuntary causes, use or non-use of contraception, fecundity or infecundity as affected by voluntary causes, sterilization or medical treatment and such other factors, factors affecting gestation and successful parturition called as gestation variable, fetal mortality from involuntary causes, fetal mortality from voluntary causes. The fertility level in any society is determined by the combined effect of all these 11 variables. All of these variables are present in every society. Each one can operate to reduce or to enhance fertility. Intercourse variables are mainly included of those which are related to the formation and dissolution of families through marriage, through premarital sexual practices and also may be included in this group. In most societies, sexual intercourse and childbearing are permitted only to married couples. The variables which determine the formation and dissolution of marital unions are age at marriage, 
proportion of women who are married, proportion of widows and the extent of widow remarriages, divorces and remarriages of the divorce. The, there are variables which affect the first stage of the process of childbearing that is sexual intercourse. Voluntary abstinence, one cultural factor responsible for keeping the level of Indian fertility low covers the traditional practices which are followed for governing the sex life of married couples. They include the separation of women after childbirth, the custom of sending the woman to her parents' home for the first delivery, taboos in sex relations when the child is young and certain religious days. Of particular interest is the fact that the number of days on which sexual intercourse is prohibited varies from about 80 days to 100 days in a year for the Hindus. Fetal mortality from voluntary causes Although women have restored to the practice of induced abortion to get rid of unwanted pregnancies, say for example, in Japan, the Eugenic Protection Law of 1948 permitted induced abortion under certain conditions. When Japanese women restarted to induced abortion on a very large scale. As a result, the birth rate in Japan declined rapidly. In India, Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act was passed in the year 1972. Use of contraception including sterilization the use of birth control methods has been the most important intermediate variable responsible for decline in fertility in various western countries in the later part of 19th century and early part of the 20th century. From the experiences of various countries, it is apparent that the effective use of contraceptives is most important variable affecting the fertility of any society. India launched the National Family Planning Program in 1951. Later, it was renamed as National Family Welfare Program with the objective of reducing the birth rate to the extent necessary to stabilize its population consistent with the requirement of the national economy. Since its inception, the program has experienced a range of contraceptive methods offered. Since October 1997, services and interventions under Family Welfare Program and the Child Survival and Safe Motherhood Program have been integrated with the Reproductive and Child Health Program. The provision of contraceptive information is fundamental to the ability of women and men to make informed choices about reproductive health decisions, but still, in India, the contraceptive use rate is only about 48.5%. Norms about intermediate variables and family size. In every society, there are some norms and customs relating to the intermediate variable as well as family size. Several sexual practices and marriage customs in India may be cited as examples in this connection. Many of these practices and customs are so thoroughly rooted in social values and norms that they are generally not even perceived rational but are followed blindly. In earlier days, the custom in India was that the Hindu girl should be married off before she entered her puberty. In order to ensure a strict observance of this custom, it was invested with a religious sanction. Similarly, marriage had to be universal for Hindu women because though men went through several sacraments throughout their lives, marriage was the only sacrament which women were allowed. These norms about intermediate variables are determined by social and economic conditions. For example, in a particular society, if there is widespread literacy among women, and their educational attainment is also very high, the norms about these intermediate variables are quite different 
from those which obtain when a high proportion of the women are illiterate early marriages were common and women had no other roles to play than those of wives and mothers only these two biological functions were open to them as avenue of self expression and self development no wonder that in such a society the intermediate variables are favorable to high fertility the extent to which national government are getting involved in family planning program is indicative of the role which apart from the part played by other intermediate variables such programs are playing and are likely to play in the future in influencing fertility thank you